Welcome to my video lecture on probe CV. Myself, R.S. Mudikeshwara, Assistant Professor of Physics, Carbon College for Women, Mandya. All the graphical representation used in this presentation are my own, own creations. In order to understand probe waves, first we should know what are waves, what are the types of waves, and what are the parameters which are used to describe a wave? A wave is a disturbance that travels through space and matter, transferring energy from one place to another. Waves can be classified into two categories, namely mechanical waves and non-mechanical waves. Mechanical waves require medium for their propagation. Based on the way they advance in a medium, they are further classified into three categories, namely transverse waves, longitudinal waves, and surface waves. Mechanical waves can be generated only in media that have elasticity and inertia. Some examples for mechanical waves are water waves and sound waves. On the other hand, non-mechanical waves do not require a medium for the propagation. These waves are emitted by electrically charged particles undergoing acceleration. These waves carry energy, momentum and angular momentum from the source particle and can import these quantities to matter with which they interact. Some examples for non-mechanical waves are light waves, microwaves, radio waves, x-rays, etc. In order to describe a wave, we require certain parameters. The parameters which are used to define a wave are amplitude, time period, wavelength, frequency, wave velocity, angular frequency, wave number, and phase. The maximum displacement of the medium particle from its mean position is called amplitude. The time taken by a wave to complete one oscillation is called its time period. The distance traveled by a wave in a time equal to its time period is called its wavelength. The number of waves produced per second is called wave frequency. The velocity with which it advances in a medium is called wave velocity. The angular frequency of a wave is given by omega is equal to 2 pi by t or it is given by 2 pi f. But whereas the wave number is given by k is equal to 2 pi by lambda, it is a very, very important parameter to know the propagation of light waves through an optical fiber. Phase. It is a particular point in time on the cycle of a waveform. For example, if you consider particles A and B as shown in the figure, the phase of the particle A is pi, but whereas the phase of the particle B is 2 pi. Suppose, if you consider two points on the wave, which are separated by a distance x2 minus x1, then the phase difference between those two points is given by pi is equal to 2 pi lambda into x2 minus x1. By the definition of wavelength, wavelength of a wave represents the distance traveled by a wave in a time equal to its time period. Therefore, the wave velocity is given by v is equal to lambda by t. But we know that the reciprocal of the time period gives the frequency of the wave. Therefore, velocity can also be expressed as f lambda. Based on the transfer of energy, waves can be further classified into two categories as stationary waves and progressive waves. Stationary waves are also referred as standing waves. They are formed in a medium when two waves having equal amplitude and frequency moving in opposite direction along the same line interfere in a confined space. They are confined to a region without transfer of energy and momentum. On the other hand, a progressive wave is a disturbance which moves through a medium with a definite velocity without changing its shape. The transfer energy and momentum 
between the particles of the medium. When a progressive wave advances in a medium, each particle of the medium executes vibration about its mean position. And all the particles of the medium vibrate with the same amplitude, frequency and time period. From the graph it is clear that there is a casual phase difference between the successive particles and also all the particles vibrating in phase will be at distance equal to n lambda. For example, if you consider three particles represented by yellow dot, red dot and blue dot at the same phase, the distance between the particles yellow and red is lambda but whereas the distance between the particles yellow and blue is 2 lambda. Hence it is clear that all the particles vibrating in phase will be at distance equal to n lambda. Progressive wave transfer energy from one place to another. Types of progressive waves. Progressive waves can be further classified into two categories. They are transverse progressive waves and longitudinal progressive waves. In transverse progressive waves, the vibrations of the medium particles are perpendicular to the direction of wave motion as shown in figure 1. These waves advance in the medium in the form of crest and truss. A crest is the maximum point of upward displacement of the medium whereas the truss is the maximum point of downward displacement of the medium. Some examples for transfer space are light waves, microwaves, radio waves, etc. In longitudinal progressive waves, the vibrations of the medium particles are parallel to the direction of the wave motion, as shown in Figure 2. These waves advance in a medium in the form of compression and rarefaction. The compression are the region in space of with maximum pressure and density whereas the rarefactions are the region in space of minimum pressure and density. Some examples for longitudinal waves are sound waves and seismic waves. A progressive wave advancing in a particular direction is called as one-dimensional progressive wave. A progressive wave advancing in a positive x direction can be represented by a relation y is equal to a sin 2 pi by lambda into vt minus x, where y is the displacement of the particle at a time t, x is the distance of the particle from the source point, a is the amplitude of the wave, lambda is the wavelength of the wave, and v is the wave velocity. In equation 1, if I take v common from the bracket, then I will get 2 pi by lambda into v into t minus x by v. But we know that v by lambda can be replaced by f and 2 pi f is equal to omega that is the angular frequency. Therefore, equation 1 becomes y is equal to a sin omega into t minus x by v. In the in equation 1, if you take 1 by lambda inside the bracket, then the equation becomes y is equal to a sin 2 pi into v by lambda into t minus x by lambda. But v by lambda can be replaced by 1 by t. Therefore, the equation becomes y is equal to a sin 2 pi into t by t minus x by lambda. In order to get the wave equations for a progressive wave advancing in negative x direction, if you replace x by minus x in the above relation, you will get the corresponding wave equation for a progressive wave advancing in negative x direction. They are given by y is equal to a sin 2 pi by lambda into v t plus x, y is equal to a sin omega into t plus x by v, and y is equal to a sin 2 pi into t by t plus x by lambda. Differential equation of wave motion. In order to derive the differential equation of wave motion, let us consider a progressive wave advancing in the positive x direction. So it can be represented by the equation y is equal to a sin 2 pi by lambda into vt minus x, call that as equation 1. Differentiation of equation 1 with respect to time twice gives equation 2, that is d square y by dt square is equal to v square 
into minus 4 pi squared by lambda squared into y. If we differentiate the equation 1 twice with respect to x, we will get d squared y by dx squared is equal to minus 4 pi squared by lambda squared into y. Let's call that as equation 3. If we substitute the value of d squared y by dx squared from equation 3 in equation 2, so that results the differential equation of wave motion that is given by d squared y by dd squared is equal to e squared into d squared y by dx squared, where v represents the velocity of the progressive wave. We are going to use this expression while obtaining the expression for a progressive wave in a medium. Velocity of a progressive wave in a medium. In order to derive an expression for the velocity of a progressive wave in a medium, first we have to obtain the differential wave equation for a progressive wave in a given medium. For example, in case of a fluid medium, when a progressive wave advances in a fluid medium, it is going to exert a volume stress. As a result of that, a volume strain will be created in the medium. As a result of that, the bulk modulus and the density of the material come into picture in this case. If you derive an expression for the differential equation of progressive wave in a fluid medium, you will get d square y by dt square is equal to e by rho into d square y by dx square. It is a very lengthy derivation, hence I have not shown all the steps here. If we compare that equation with a standard equation that is d square y by dd square is equal to v square into d square y by dx square, then we will get v square is equal to e by rho. Therefore, v can be written as root of e by rho. From this relation, it is clear that the velocity of a progressive wave in a fluid medium depends on two parameters. Number one, the elastic constant E and the density of the material. The velocity of a progressive wave in a fluid medium is directly proportional to the square root of the bulk modulus of the medium and inversely proportional to the square root of the density of the medium. In order to obtain the expression for the velocity of a progressive wave in a solid medium, so again you have to derive the expression for the differential equation of a progressive wave in a solid medium. When a progressive wave advances in a solid medium, which is going to exert a linear stress, as a result of that, one can observe a linear strain in the medium. Therefore, the differential equation for a progressive wave in a solid medium is given by d square y by dt square is equal to q by rho into d square y by dx square. If you compare this with the standard wave equation, we will get v is equal to root of q by rho. From this expression, it is clear that the velocity of a progressive wave in a solid medium depends on the Young's modulus of the medium and the density of the medium, that is, which is directly proportional to the square root of the Young's modulus and inversely proportional to the square root of the density of the medium. Newton's formula for velocity of sound in a gas. Newton derived an expression for the velocity of progressive wave in a in a for sound waves. According to Newton, when a progressive wave like sound wave advances in a medium, okay, the mechanism of propagation can be considered as an isothermal process. Newton assumed that the temperature of gas remains constant at all points when sound passes through it. Hence, according to Newton, the gas is in isothermal state when sound wave passes through it. We know that in case of isothermal process, the temperature of the system is going to remain constant. Therefore, for an isothermal process, one can write Pv is equal to constant, or P can be written as K into V power minus 1, let's call it as equation 1. If we differentiate equation 1 with respect to V, we will get dP by dV is equal to K V power minus 1 divided by V, let's call it as equation number 2. If P and V represent the pressure and volume of the gas through which the sound wave is advancing, and if dp represent the increase in pressure and dv represent the decrease in pressure, then the bulk modulus of the medium is given by the ratio of volume stress to the volume strain. The volume stress can be replaced by dp, but the volume strain can be replaced by minus dv by v. 
where the negative sign represents the decrease in volume. If we substitute the value of dB by dB from equation 2, then you will get E is equal to K into V power minus sign. Using equation 1, in that E can be written as P. Therefore, if you substitute the value of E in the general expression for the velocity of a progressive wave in a fluid medium, that is V is equal to square root of E by rho, you will get the expression for the velocity of sound wave in a gaseous medium as V is equal to root of P by rho. So this relation is known as Newton's formula for the velocity of sound in a gaseous medium. According to this formula, the velocity of sound at normal temperature and pressure in A is found to be 280 meter per second. But this value is not in good agreement with the experimentally obtained value that is 332 meter per second. Therefore, this relation fails to explain or fails to predict the correct value for the velocity of sound in a gaseous medium like A. Later, it was corrected by French scientist Laplace. According to Laplace, as gases are bad conductors of heat, quick flow of heat to a gas is not possible. Therefore, when sound wave passes through a gas, the temperature increases at compression and decreases at rarefaction. Hence, according to Laplace, a gas is in adiabatic state rather than isothermal state. We know that during adiabatic process, the heat of the system is going to remain constant. Therefore, the product PV per gamma is equal to constant. Or one can write P is equal to K into V power minus 1. We call that as equation 1. Differentiating equation 1 with respect to V results equation 2. Using equation 1 and 2, we will get dP by dV is equal to minus gamma into P by V. Again, the bulk modulus of the medium is given by volume stress by volume sign. If we substitute the value of stress and sign, we will get minus V into dP by dV, where again negative sign represents the decrease in volume. If we substitute the value of dP by dV in that relation, we will get E is equal to gamma into P. If we substitute that value and the general expression for the velocity of a progressive wave in a fluid medium, that is V is equal to root of E by rho, we will get V is equal to root of gamma P wave by rho. So this equation represents the velocity of sound in A according to Laplace. And this relation is known as Newton's Laplace formula for the velocity of sound in A. According to this formula, the velocity of sound at NDP in A is found to be 333 meter per second and is in good agreement with the experimental value that is 332 meter per second. Thank you.